Alright, what's up everyone? This is Ninja Death Strike bringing you a ridiculous Pokemon Black and White Wi Fi battle. This was against my friend Silver, a uh, member of PLO, the site I play on a good bit. And uh, this was a, just a crazy match. So much hacks. So, so much hacks that I've added a hacks counter into this video just to keep track of all the hacks. And every time one of us gets hacks, you'll hear this sound. And I'll add a counter to our respective hacks counters, so keep an eye out on this battle. Uh, when I saw his team, that Jirachi stands out like a sore thumb, it's the only OU thing here, and I knew I was going to have a problem taking it down, but I had no idea what I was in for, so anyhow, let's get into it. Silver's going to lead with his Ampibomb, I'm going to lead with Fright Knight, my Driplin, and this is just kind of a support set that I made up. It's Scarfed with Trick and Will-O-Wisp, so I burn him right off the bat, which is nice, but uh, Silver gets a first turn crit, so anytime you get a first turn crit, you know it's going to be an interesting battle, and this one definitely didn't dis disappoint in that respect, but I go into Bender, my Registeel here, because Ampibomb can't touch me. Even if he has Brick Break, or in this case, a Low Sweep, it's not going to matter, especially since he's burned. Silver gets another crit there, uh, but it does nothing, and neither does the low sweep, so I'm not threatened at all. I'm going to take this turn to get up my rocks. I expected Silver to switch, but he stays in here. I guess he figured Ampibomb is kind of worthless, but now he decides to withdraw it, and I just go for the Seismic Toss since uh, he doesn't have any ghosts. I know I'm going to be able to hit whatever he wants to switch in or leave in for a decent chunk, but him on top comes in. Even though I'm at a type disadvantage, I stay in, because I'm not threatened, I know it can't one-hit KO me, and I just want to get it paralyzed so that I'll be able to deal with it uh, easier. I know it will probably carry Sucker Punch, but I can play around that, and I'd really like some Perilous. So now that he went to bulk up, I'm going to switch into Lightning, my Illmise, as he gets fully paralyzed. And I can either take the resisted fighting attack, or if he goes for bulk up again, I can Encore him. And since he gets paralyzed twice in a row... I'm able to Encore him so that he can't do anything but bulk up now, and then I put a Confuse right on him, so now he's paralyzed and confused and stuck into bulk up, so him on top really can't do anything right now. I'm going to U-turn out on this turn and uh, try to take advantage of that Parafusion, go back into Fright Knight since he's going to be my least valuable member, and uh, I'm just going to trick... Uh, my scarf onto him as he hits himself in confusion a couple of times and uh, now he can't do anything but bulk up so him on top is completely crippled and uh, Fright Knight served as a great lead and knowing that he can't hurt me I'm gonna go back into lightning predicted predicting his attempt to sucker punch which fails so now he's got to switch out and I'm gonna hit whatever comes in with another confuser it turns out to be Porygon Z who gets a special attack raise uh, as he with his download ability. That's not awesome, but I get him uh, confused as he switches and then paralyzed since this is a Dream World Illmise. I know it's not released yet, but just grab bag, so I didn't think it would matter that much. And it works fantastically. I was so happy with it in this battle. Uh, Silver hurts himself in confusion, which gives me a free switch out. And uh, he's going to hurt himself again, which gives me... Uh, a free opportunity to set up Calamity, my Absol, with a Swords Dance, which was a little bit risky, but since I had the Parafusion, he only has about a 25% chance of attacking, and you can see he hit himself three times in a row, and then I was just easy, easily able to take him out with a Sucker Punch. So Porygon Z only hurt itself that, that battle, and uh, now Jump Bluff comes in. I'm expecting a Sleep Powder here, but he actually has a Flight Gem Acrobatic set, which is unorthodox, to say the least. But I go into Fright Knight, basically a Sleep Fodder, but, you know, Death Fodder works too. I get a little bit of extra Aftermath damage in there. And it gives me a free switch back into Lightning, who's going to do her thing. I set up a Paralyze on the first turn, because I know that thing is really fast, and I want it Paralyze more than Confuse. Since I run max HP, max defense, acrobatics is not going to be enough to take me out, and I'm going to be able to set up my confusion. So I've got parafusion going again, and I believe on this turn, uh, yeah, jump off hurts itself. I forget what I do. Possibly U-turn. Uh, I'm going to U-turn on this turn uh, and go back into Bender since 
I'm not thinking he's going to go for sleep powder. He's probably going to go for acrobatics to try to take me out. And that's what he does. Acrobatics does nothing because Bender is ridiculous. And since he's paralyzed, and Iron Head is easily going to finish him off from that range. And uh, now I'm figuring Hitmontop might want to come back in. Yeah, Hitmontop comes back in. I don't know if an Iron Head is going to quite kill. But since he moved first, that means, that means he went for Sucker Punch. So Silver didn't expect to survive this either. Uh, but he gets fully paralyzed. He does get the second one off, but I'm going to recover off that damage plus some of the leftovers. And Bender is doing some work in here. He finishes off hit on top. And next Silver is going to bring an Ampibomb, which is kind of an odd choice since he had a free switch. He could have saved that thing for Death Water later, but he just decides to get rid of it now. Uh, whatever. It's not like it could do anything to anybody with that burn condition. So Bender takes that out. And now I believe uh, Jirachi comes in, or what I thought was Jirachi. And then it goes for Night Slash, which really confused me. I was not thinking, I should have realized right there that it was actually uh, Zorork, but I completely forgot he had Zorork, so uh, I set up a Perilous on it, and then I'm going to switch into my Mew, expecting him to go for Body Slam, uh, but he gets fully paralyzed instead. So I get a free Swords Dance up as he goes for Night Slash, and I guess there's a physical Zorork, which is kind of odd. Night Slash does less than half to my Mew. This is kind of a weird set. It's max HP, max uh, defense with Swords Dance, Drain Punch, and Sucker Punch. So Drain Punch takes down Zorork, and now the real Jirachi comes in, and the nightmare begins. I begin by going for a uh, Drain Punch. I should have gone for a Swords Dance there. It would have made this match a lot quicker. Like, seriously, the rest of this battle is just me trying to kill this one thing uh, through a series of very unfortunate events. I just can't kill it. So I get a crit there. Almost takes it out. But instead, I get paralyzed. And since he tricked away my Lumberry, he gets the advantage, meaning that I'm left paralyzed. He's not. And that means he's faster. And he's able to rest up all of that health I just did. And, um... Even though I'm plus two, I don't have any attack investment, and Jirachi is bulky as hell, so it's barely going to take a fourth. I'm just going to Drain Punch away, hoping for maybe another crit, but that's not going to happen. I do know that he doesn't have Rest Talk, though, so when he rests for the second time, I know that I have two free turns to do something, and this should have been the end of the match right here. I go into Calamity, get up a Sword Stance. I'm going to get up a second one, so I'm at plus four, but I lose track of the sleep turns, and I don't go for Sucker Punch here like I should have. And I get paralyzed, and then I get fully paralyzed, and then I get fully paralyzed again. So if I hadn't gotten paralyzed on either of those turns, it would have been good game again, but it's not. Instead, I die to Body Slam, and all of my attackers are now dead or disabled, so... I really think the only option for me is going to be able to PP stall this thing out because it's just going to keep resting and I can't do enough damage to take it out. I have one more guy that might be able to do it, but uh, I'm going to Encore here because I don't want to give it a chance to heal. I want to keep it attacking because if I can get a couple of turns with either Perilous or Confusion or where it's got to attack due to Encore, I might have a chance. And I'm just going to keep racking up all that hacks, confusion hits, perilous, until I feel like I'm safe to U-turn out here. And I'm going to go into my only hope, really, to deal with this thing timely. I wasn't actually scared of losing at this point. Like, I can just PP stall him out if I have to, but that would be so annoying. So I'm hoping maybe I can take it out with Mukal, my, my mill tank, uh, since I run Curse. And I'm figuring I'm just going to be able to put up enough uh, curses that it won't be able to touch me. I'm not worried about Perilous since I have Heal Bell. And so I'm going to start cursing up, uh, seeing that I'm going to need to be at plus six to do any amount of damage to this. And since I know every time he has to rest, I'm going to get two free curses in. Uh, if I can keep myself unparalyzed, that'll be nice. And since I have Heal Bell, it should be able to make that happen. So he wakes up here. Uh, I paralyze him again, which is great since it's going to let me be faster, and then I almost whittle him down, but he gets the Perilous on me, 
So now he's faster. He doesn't get fully paralyzed and he rests back up again. So, ah, uh, I was so close to killing this thing so many times. I'm going to go right back into the pattern, start cursing up again. Um, and I believe now I am at plus six. I kind of lost count. Yeah, I'm at plus six now, so I don't need to waste turns cursing anymore. Uh, I get paralyzed again, but I feel pretty good until he shows me that he has Psychic and he gets a special defense drop. So, oh, oh my god, this thing's so annoying, but I think I can still win if I can keep the pressure on him, keep him going for Body Slam over Psychic because I'm not sh sure I can survive a Psychic at minus one. So he's forced to rest again. I heal off the Perilous. So I don't have to worry about being fully paralyzed. And now I'm just going to go for a couple of body slams. And uh, thinking that even if he does take out Miltank, uh, he's at, he'll be at low enough health by then that I can just seismic toss him uh, and take him out. But the Hax Gods give me one final gift. I get a last turn crit. It speeds up this process by maybe a couple of turns. But hey, at this point, I'll take it. So uh, that was a good game, Silver. I mean... Not really good game. That was a crazy game, but it was a lot of fun. The final hacks count stands at a insane 33. This was a 60 turn battle thanks to Jirachi refusing to die. So that means that uh, the probability of one of us getting hacks on any given turn was over 50%. Um, just a just a crazy match, and uh, I'm really happy that I was able to share it with you guys comment rate tell me what you thought about it uh make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and uh stay tuned guys i'll have more coming your way shortly thanks